Good morning, Year 9. Um, we're going to start Physics 1 today looking at contact forces um, and for what we really need for you to develop your ideas about the differences between both contact and non-contact forces. Um, you need to be able to give the definition of each of those groups and give examples um, of types of forces that would fit into those groups. You have to be able to describe the differences between those two groups of forces. Um, and hopefully we can get on to looking at resultant forces today um, in preparation for our next couple of lessons. So as I've mentioned already, forces can be split into two large groups, contact forces and non-contact forces. Um, as you would expect, for contact forces, two or more objects have to be touching in order for the force to act. If you rub your hands together, um, those are two objects that are touching, and friction will build up. You will feel that as your hands warm up. Non-contact forces do not require objects to be touching, um, and they will still act anyway. For example, if you think back to um, studying magnetism, lower down school, if you bring two magnets towards each other and you have the opposite poles of a magnet, a north and a south pole, um, and you start to bring them close together, before they touch, before you make them touch, the force of magnetism, which is a non-contact force around them, will bring them together. They will attract each other. Um, on the opposite end, if you take two like poles, so if you have two north poles or two south poles of a magnet and you try and bring them together, as you start to bring them towards each other, um, the non-contact force of magnetism, the magnetic field that surrounds the magnets, will cause the two magnets to repel each other and move away from each other. Those two magnets do not need to touch in order for magnetism to have an effect. All forces, whether they are contact or non-contact, are examples of something called a vector. Vectors have both a direction and a magnitude, which is just another word for size. We'll come back to vectors and another group of measurements called scalars as we move through this topic. So your first task today is to read through this text below some information about forces. In total, there are eight mistakes that have been made. Now, if we were in school, I would ask you to underline them, um, the errors or circle the errors. But I realise since you're on the computer, that might be difficult. So all I would ask you to do, um, however you're working, is to identify them yourself so that you can check them yourself in a minute when we go through our answers. So I would recommend that you pause this video here and spend a few minutes reading through this information and identifying the spelling, punctuation or grammar mistakes and, and correcting them. So pause now and hit play once you're done. So hopefully you've had long enough to spot the errors and you've got all eight of them. In case you haven't, here they all are. So I've highlighted them all in red. It needs a capital I at the start. And um, because a force is a push or a pull in a particular direction, new sentence, it can also be a twist. Forces affect how objects move. For example, they can make objects start moving, stop moving, move faster, move slower, change direction or change shape. Well, there needs to be a comma between move slower and change direction. Forces cannot be seen, but we can see their effects. That should be their T-H-E-I-R. An example of a force you've already studied is magnetism, as we mentioned earlier. But there's a full stop missing. We cannot see magnetic fields, but if we put a compass or iron filings close to it, they show us the position of the fields. Force is measured in newtons, which we write as N. So, um, compass needs another S on the end. Position needs to lose one of its S's. And the word which needs a H after the W and before the I. 
Well done if you got all of them. Next, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven types of force and seven definitions or descriptions of those forces. Um, and all I'd like you to do is to match up the force with its definition. So once again, I'll ask you to pause the video clip here, get on with that, and then unpause it when you're wanting to check your answers. So let us run through these. I might have picked a bit of a funny order to do these in. And the first force that I've done the definition for is upthrust. It's an upward force that acts in water. It acts against gravity, and it's why certain objects float. Next up is friction. This force acts on objects when they're in contact with a substance, such as the ground. The smoother the two surfaces are, the less friction there will be. Next, we have weight, a force that is caused by gravity. It is the gravitational force between an object and the earth. It is not the same as mass and your weight varies depending on where you are in the universe. For example, you would have a less weight on the moon than you have on Earth because the amount of gravity or gravitational force is different. Next up is air resistance, a force which acts in the air. It can slow objects down when they are moving against it, or it can be harnessed and used to move an object along, for example, when someone is windsurfing. This force you will sometimes see referred to as drag. Um, next up, gravity, which we mentioned a minute or so ago. This is an attractive force, meaning it pulls objects towards each other. The size of this force varies depending on where you are in the universe. As I mentioned just, re just a second ago, um, there is, the force of gravity on the moon is smaller than the force of gravity on Earth. The force of gravity on the sun is greater than the force of gravity um, of the Earth. Next is thrust. This can be any driving force. It's a push or a pull or even an engine that forces an object forwards. And lastly, we have lift. The force required to raise an object through a fluid. So once again, I'd like you to pause the video here and follow the instructions and draw a diagram for me. Remember that your diagram should be drawn in pencil. Any straight line should be done with a ruler. And please make sure that you are following the instructions set by the task. My diagram is going to be very simple and yours should be pretty simple too. So pause here and unpause when you're ready to move on. So here is my excellent diagram of a boat. Um, the boat that we were shown was floating, um, which means that the forces of weight and upthrust are equal. We are now showing them with a single pencil line. Now, admittedly, mine is in pencil, but that wouldn't work very well um, on the computer. So your diagram must be drawn in pencil. It must be drawn using a ruler. And the arrows should be simple and labelled with the names of the forces. As the boat is floating, they should also be equally sized arrows. If the weight arrow was larger, the boat would be sinking. If the upthrust arrow was larger, the boat would be out of the water. So for your next task, I'd like you to pause here. Using your previous answers, add some arrows and labels to show what forces are acting on Bear grills. When he's stuck in quicksand. So pause here, unpause when you're ready to move on. So the forces acting on Bear grills in quicksand are actually the same as the forces acting on the boats. And um, as Bear grills is not sinking, he's actually floating in the quicksand. The two forces need to be equally sized. We show that by having equally sized arrows. Um, the force of weight or gravity would be um, the force that is pulling him downwards. However, as quicksand contains a lot of water, the force of upthrust is causing him to float. These two must be equal, otherwise he'd either be sinking or he'd be moving upwards. 
And next we are moving on to force diagrams. And we've got an example here of a tug of war. The group on the left are pulling to the left with a force of a thousand newtons. And the group on the right are pulling to the right with a force of 1000 newtons. You then have six statements and I'd like you to pick the best answer from each one. So you're picking one of these statements written in capital letters. So again, pause here and unpause when you're ready to move on. So um, the forces above are pushing or pulling forces. I might have given that away a little bit with my description. They are both pulling forces. The forces shown above are working together or in opposite directions. Well, one is to the left and one is to the right. They must be in opposite directions. The forces shown above are equal or not equal. Well, they're both 1,000, so they're both equal. The forces do or do not balance each other. Well, if they are equal, they do balance each other. The net or total force is 1,000 newtons to the right, 1,000 newtons to the left, or zero. Well, since the two forces are equal but opposite to each other, they cancel each other out, and the answer is zero. This means there is or is no motion. Well, if there is no force overall, there won't be any motion whatsoever. The rope and the people should stay still. Now, on this force diagram, we have another tug of war. The person on the left has a force of 200 newtons. The people on the right have, the fo have a force of 100 newtons between them. And once again, I'd like you to pause here and to pick the right answer from the two words or statements that are written in capital letters. So pause now and unpause when you're ready to check your answers. So the forces shown above are pushing or pulling forces. Well, once again, they are both pulling forces. The forces shown are working together or in opposition to each other. They are opposite to each other because they're working in opposite directions. The forces shown above are equal or not equal. One's 200 and one's 100, so they are not equal. The forces do balance each other or do not balance each other. Well, since they are not equal, they do not balance each other. The stronger force is pulling right or left. Well, 200 newtons to the left, 100 to the right. So the stronger force is pulling left. And therefore, motion is to the right or left. Well, it will move in the direction of the strongest force, so left. So your last task for today, superhero forces. Um, you're going to use everything we've looked at today um, and also get to be a little artistic. Um, so pause here and read through the instructions. Make sure that all the forces you add have both arrows and are labelled very clearly. Once you have completed it, and um, if you can take a picture on your phone or even scan in your superhero diagram and email via your school email um, and send it to your science teacher. Okay, good luck everyone.